I'm Jay Fear, Soil Health Specialist for NRCS, Bismarck, North Dakota. And today we're at the Minokin Farm. It's a conservation demonstration farm that's owned and operated by the Burley County Soil Conservation District. And we're discussing a systems approach to soil health. So we're looking at soil armor. Let's go to the field. Good morning. We're going to be talking about soil health principles today and we'd like to start with the first one as soil armor or cover on the soil. And soils really weren't meant to be bare, we meant to get them covered and uh, nature generally has a good cover on them and when we mimic nature usually good things happen in this environment. So if we take a look at uh, cover on the soil it can be uh, a dead litter or it can be a green plant or it can be a combination of the two. The particular field that we're on right now was a pea field that was harvested a couple weeks ago and we put a cover crop on it immediately after harvest. So we have a combination here of a green, live, viable plant and dead litter. So we have both. So if we take a look at it, just a little bit on the soil here, we're going to see the combination of the green plants, plant diversity and dead litter from this year's harvest and a little bit of dead litter even from the previous year's harvest. And so those provide that cover, they provide that protection. And then you look at what are the benefits of doing this. And so if we take a look at the benefits, uh, you have to bring erosion to the forefront. Because if we can control wind and water erosion, that's a huge item starting to build soils. And I think uh, uh, they're, they're uh, pretty significant items and they definitely uh, are so something that we need to get a, a good firm control on with the dead litter and with the green plant. Secondly, I'd probably put um, uh, rainfall compaction. And so if we have bare soils uh, and the rainfall uh, occurs, we start to slake on the soil surface and we start to form more of a crust and we get compaction. And if we can take the energy out of the rainfall with the dead litter and with the green plants, that definitely is a benefit. Next item I would say probably as far as benefits would be evaporation. So when we bring in uh, dead litter onto the soil and green plants, we can start to take water out through the green plant as transpiration and in lieu of evaporation. And so anytime we're evaporating water, that water is not going to be available for a plant, it's not going to be available for crop production. And I think evaporation uh, also can leave salts behind and can lead towards salinity. And so anything we can do to start to contain evaporation. I'd probably follow that with temperature. The residue uh, creates um, a nice cover and we get more of a moderate temperature and it starts to take out the extremes, extremely hot, extremely cold and instead we get more of a moderate temperature. And I think that's real important uh, for the soil function. So the soil food web is a lot like people, uh, it likes a moderate temperature and I think that's a very, very good environment uh, for an active soil food web to be working in. Also, uh, it creates a habitat. So the residue, whether it's the dead litter res residue or whether it's the green plants or the combination of the two, creates a habitat for the surface dwellers and for insects, pollinators. So we have to have a habitat for these to exist as well and to perform their functions for us. Another item would be uh, weed suppression. Uh, I think that's another benefit. And so when we have um, uh, plants actively growing and uh, we have dead litter on the surface. Uh, there's less sunlight coming in for uh, weed, um, uh, weed production, weed seeds to form uh, a new plant and so it helps us curb some weed suppression as well. It doesn't eliminate weeds but it's definitely part of weed suppression. And so collectively all of these together uh, give us a good basis of the benefits for putting, putting residue or putting cover uh, armoring up our soil and I think that's a really a good start for building soils. Thanks Jay for discussing the soil health principles and how they are intended to be applied in a systems approach. I'm Darrell Oswald with the Burley County Soil Conservation District. These videos are another example of the great partnership between the Burley County Soil Conservation District, the Minokin Farm and the NRCS. For more soil health information visit the Minokin Farm website, the Minokin Farm YouTube channel, and the NRCS website. And thanks for watching.